Hi, I'm Jeff Borsowitz. I'm the owner of Corona Cigar Company here in Orlando. I'm here with my friend Art Berenger. Hi. Art's a member of the Cigar Rights of America and a consumer of cigars. Um, this is an open video uh, message to our members of the United States Senate and the United States Congress. Um, the reason why we're doing this is we want to bring attention to your an issue that's threatening the existence of the premium cigar industry. Um, what has happened is in 2008, Congress approved the uh, Food and Drug Administration to regulate all tobacco products. Um, the focus of the bill is primarily on cigarettes and the youth uh, access issue on cigarettes. It was called the Family Smoking Prevention Tobacco Control Act. Premium cigars were not part of that bill. They were exempt. Uh, Congress didn't feel that there was an issue with children smoking cigars so they were never part of the bill. However, it left a loophole where the FDA could later uh, expand its authority to include cigars. And that's why we're talking to you today. Um, one of the things that happened in the, in the Tobacco Control Act is it banned flavored cigarettes. Um, so products that were like vanilla cigarettes or clove cigarettes, they got banned because the anti-tobacco people were saying that kids were being lured into smoking by smoking these products. Um, I don't agree with that. We happened to sell a lot of clove cigarettes prior to that, and it was all adults that were enjoying this product, but um, that's uh, a little different now. The products that used to be cigarettes were reformulated so these companies could stay in business. They changed the way they were made, and they started using tobacco that's cigar tobacco, and they changed the, the paper that was normally used on the outside of these um, into a homogenized tobacco product. So by the definition, the federal definition of what's called a large cigar, this now qualifies. So this product that's considered a large cigar, this filtered little one that comes in the packs like this, is now in the same category uh, as a product such as this. This has caused uh, the anti-tobacco people, and particularly Henry Waxman, who was the co-author of the bill. He introduced it with uh, Senator Ted Kennedy. It was called the Kennedy-Waxman bill. And uh, Henry Waxman had written a letter uh, to the Food and Drug Administration and Margaret Hamburg asking her to expand the regulations of cigarettes to include cigars uh, so that it could essentially ban this product. Um, the University of Maryland also had petitioned uh, Margaret Hamburg and the uh, FDA to expand their regulations to include cigars as well. Both of these documents though, however, do state that there's a difference between premium large cigars and this type of product. The FDA and the Health and Human Services have published three times in the Federal Register uh, asking for cigars subject to the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act. So they put notices out three times that they intend to expand the regulations of cigarettes to include cigars. Now the problem that this poses for the premium cigar industry and cigar retailers like Corona Cigar Company and thousands of other premium cigar stores that are located across this country is that if these regulations are expanded to include premium cigars, our stores would become illegal. One of the things that the uh, FDA and the Tobacco Control Act it bans is what's called self-serve tobacco displays. Your typical cigar store has a walk-in humidor where people come in, they look, they touch, they smell, they feel the cigars, they look at the ornate boxes. Um, that's part of the, the tradition and the culture when people select a cigar. Well, the idea behind this is that, in, this is an example of what they've done in Canada with the smoke-free people there, is that in Canada, they've made it illegal for you to purchase any tobacco products on your own. So they have to be locked up behind the counter. And if you want to buy a cigar, you have to pick it out of a three-ring binder. So that would just that would just annihilate our industry in, in, in the way we do business, because people are used to coming in and selecting their own cigar. If this thing gets regulated where they've got to choose it out of a binder, um, 
it, the sales are going to be dramatically impacted. The other thing, it would uh, potentially ban all mail order cigar sales. So people who live in remote areas that don't have access to a, a retail cigar store would no longer be able to buy their cigars. It would limit where you can't uh, advertise your products. Uh, you couldn't advertise your stores. I know Corona Cigar Company in here would have been a longtime advertiser in magazines like Orlando Magazine where we like to advertise our stores. We wouldn't be permitted to do this. Um, Cigar Aficionado, which is a magazine geared towards adults, uh, is loaded with ads for uh, cigar companies and other products, and, and this would become illegal too. So we've got a lot of problems here, and the other, there's, a, there's even more than that. For example, like flavored, flavored tobacco products would also be in jeopardy. So brands such as like our Maker's Mark cigars, which are bourbon seasoned, or Java cigars, tobacco special, products that are coffee infused, these products could be banned as well, and adults buy this. This is not products that children have any access to or any desire to smoke. This product is, sells for $13. So kids don't come into cigar stores. These products are not marketed toward children, but if these, if these regulations are expanded to include cigars, all of these products would be in jeopardy of becoming illegal. The other problem we face is simple things like a cigar hat or a shirt or a t-shirt these things would be banned as well, because under the Tobacco Control Act, those products aren't allowed either. So we've got a lot of ramifications of how it would infect this industry. And right now, the most important thing that we've got in this country is a problem is with jobs. We need to protect small businesses. We need to keep people employed. And this bill, if, if the FDA expands these regulations to include cigars, this industry will lose jobs. You will see stores closing across this country. This is a federal issue where there's thousands or approximately 8,000 people in the United States that work in this industry. There's approximately 350,000 that work outside this United States making these cigars in developing countries such as Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominican Republic. So this has far-reaching ramifications besides just the, the brick and mortar retailers and your small businesses that normally you see on your main street of, of your local town. So one of the things we also point out, the cigar industry is very, very small. When you look at the difference between this is a pie chart here. There's half a trillion cigarettes sold every year. There's 500, there's 500 million machine-made cigars sold. That's a very small segment here. The premium cigar industry is only 250 million. It's a very, very small industry. So we're not part of the problem. Kids don't smoke these products. We shouldn't have these regulations uh, expanded to us. However, the people that are in control of the FDA and the people that are at the HHS, we don't think we're going to get a fair shake with these people. And so one of the things that we've got, the solution in order to protect this industry so that we can basically conduct business and sleep at night without having to worry about the government taking over our businesses, is there's a bill called House Resolution 1639. 1639 is a bipartisan bill uh, introduced by Representative Bill Posey, who's a Republican, and a Democrat named Kathy Castor. We also have a companion bill introduced in the Senate. It was introduced by uh, Democrats, uh, Senator Bill Nelson and Republican Senator Marco Rubio. Um, this bill is a very short three-page bill. And what it does, it would exclude traditional large premium cigars from having the FDA having the authority to regulate these products. And what it does is it creates a new definition for what is considered a traditional large and premium cigar. So the, 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 this product here will be differentiated from a product like this. One of the things that's done is it, it's required that the weight for a traditional large cigar uh, to be increased. Currently it's at three pounds per thousand. It would increase it to six pounds per thousand. So it'd have to be much larger than this. Also, it would not allow the product to have a filter on it. So any of the cigars that have a filter would not qualify as a traditional large cigar. The other thing is that it would require that the wrapper, the outside of the cigar, is made with a tobacco leaf, not with a homogenized paper type of substance. So uh, we're hoping that we can get a good, uh, your congressmen and your senators to please support this bill, support the industry, protect your small business owners, let people uh, have the freedom to enjoy a cigar without the FDA stepping in to tell them what they can and can't do saves jobs, saves businesses, and uh, if you're a consumer, the best thing for you to do is reach out to your senator or your congressman. 
Um, you're a constituent. Your voice matters. It resonates. Reach out to them. You can, there's, there's some great resources out there. You can go to cigarrightsofamerica.org. Uh, there's a, a petition in there. You can also go to ipcpr.org, which has a, 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 a feature in there. We can easily send an email or a letter to your congressman and senator and encourage your fellow retailers. It's important for the, re the fellow retailers out there that sell this premium cigars to call your congressman. Ask them to support this. Your business depends on it. I urge all the retail tobacconists in the United States to motivate, mobilize their constituents in their towns and cities, their clientele, to get on the bandwagon with us to keep the cigar shops open and the government out of the private sector. That's it. God bless America. Reach out to your congressman and senator and support H.R. 1639 and Senate Bill 1461. Thank you. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right.